In Module 2, Perimeter Security, we're first going to make sure that we understand what is necessary to secure our perimeter router. And it's critical that that perimeter router uh, be not only resistant from uh, physical attacks where maybe someone has physical access to the device, so building on what we learned in Module 1, that device needs to be in a secure physical location, but also from virtual attacks. Make sure that you secure administrative access to that device. That means make sure that no one can walk up going through a console port or VTY, telnet to that device, be able to log in and essentially poke a hole in that device for their applications for their attack to talk through. Uh, that would be an easy way for the a attacker to take your network down. We'll also take a look at some different methods of authentication and authorization. Specifically, we'll talk about AAA, that being authentication, authorization, and accounting. Uh, and we can implement AAA a couple different ways, either using a local database of users that are provisioned on the router itself or using an external server. Simply in a larger environment when I have a lot of users, it's not scalable to try to maintain a local database of users on the router itself, especially if I have multiple edge devices with uh, databases that would have to be the same. So we'll have an external server, forward authentication request to it using either TACX or RADIUS as a protocol. Also, we're going to take a look at secure management and reporting, having things like an external syslog server, uh, protocols such as SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, and NTP. Make sure that all my devices have the same clock on them using Network Time Protocol. Most of what we're going to configure is going to be done once again through Cisco's Security Device Manager, however, some things absolutely through command line.